So now that we know about objects, we can actually do some interesting things with them. We can use the objects that are built into App Script and Google Sheets so that we can actually manipulate those spreadsheets. So, so far we've only worked with our spreadsheet in regard to custom functions. We've created a custom function, we've passed in some values, uh, we've done something with it, we've returned those values or some result back. Uh, but using this spreadsheet app object, we can actually manipulate the spreadsheet directly. We can use this to make our spreadsheet behave more like an application, make it more interactive, and do some really interesting interesting things with it. Uh, one thing to note though, when your spreadsheet or your script editor starts modifying your spreadsheet directly, it's going to behave like an app and Google's going to ask you to authorize it so that it actually has the capability to manipulate your spreadsheet. Uh, this is to keep you safe, but you know when we're writing all of the code, there's really not a whole lot of damage that you can do just yet. Uh, so we'll review how you can do this in a future video in this module, it'll probably be the very next video. Um, when we want to retrieve values, we can actually use Spreadsheet App to get the current spreadsheet, and that will give us, uh, you know, if we call Spreadsheet App .get Active Sheet, that will give us an object representing the current sheet in our spreadsheet. So the, we'll see all of the different things you can do with a sheet object. There are a lot of things, and you can see when you, we get into our first videos, you'll notice that it will even suggest what we can do. We can actually use that uh, using some com auto complete functionality. Uh, once you have that sheet, the one that's currently open, get active sheet, if you have multiple sheets in your spreadsheet, this will give you the one that's currently open and currently being used. You can retrieve values from that using get range and get value. So if we wanted to get the value of cell B5, we could just use spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range B5 dot get value and that would return whatever is in cell B5. We can also use coordinates to address those. So uh, 3, 6 will actually give us the third row in the sixth column, which would be cell F3. This doesn't start with zero. Zero isn't A here. A is one. So cell F3 would be row three in column six. Spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range three six would give us the value of whatever is in F3. Now if we want to modify those values, pretty straightforward. We can just use a very similar call, spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range. Everything there is the same so far, but then we're going to set that value. Instead of get value, we're going to set value to whatever we want to set it to. And similarly, if we want to do that with cell F3, we do the same thing and then we just set its value. And you can set that to a string or to a number or to a date or to some type of object. You can do a lot of different things with uh, this set value method in the range. Now. If we want to modify the spreadsheet, we've got a couple of options. We can clear everything just using spreadsheet app .get active sheet clear. That's going to wipe out everything though. It's going to take out all the content, all of your formatting, anything else that you've added to that area of your spreadsheet. So that can be pretty dangerous, but there are situations where you may want to output a bunch of different values or you might want to dump a bunch of new things into the spreadsheet. So clear can actually be useful as well if you know what you're doing with it. We can use get name to get the name of the spreadsheet and we can even set it so we could create a function that modifies the spreadsheet uh, name so that we can set it to something new or something that is relevant to the content of the spreadsheet. Now we can also get the last column in the last row to tell us how much data is in the spreadsheet. You can use last or spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get last column. That's just going to give you back the last column of what's currently sh or in the current sheet. And similarly, get last row will give you the last row. So this will give you the the number. So you could use this to identify everything in your spreadsheet up to a certain uh, up to the end and of the columns and up to the end of the rows. You can add rows to your spreadsheet. You can just use arrays to do that. So if we have an array of values, we can use spreadsheet app .get active sheet .append row, and that will put a, an additional row of data into our spreadsheet. And we'll take a look at how that actually works and what we can do there. Uh, we can also use the range object to retrieve more data. So earlier in this, this presentation, we showed how you could get a single cell. Here we can actually get multiple cells. So if we use spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range and then pass in a row number, a column number, and a number of rows, this will actually just give us all of the data associated with the rows for a particular number of rows. And we can also get based on the number of rows and columns so you know you could use spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range starting at a particular row starting at a particular column including a certain number of rows and including a certain number of columns 
Uh, so in this case, you know, we would pass in row call num, num rows num calls, which would be starting at row three, the first column. So we would be starting at that third row, column A, uh, getting ten rows, and then three columns. So that would be everything A, B, C from row three all the way down to row twelve. You know, because you'd have three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. That would give you ten rows. So you would get a lot of data that way. The other way you can do this is just use the range. You could use A3, C12, which would give you the same values, uh, but using the, the, ra the range notation that you might be familiar with using Google Sheets. Now, before we get into how to manipulate larger amounts of data and deal with larger amounts of data, we need to think a little bit about two-dimensional arrays. So when we looked at arrays, we looked at just arrays that had a single dimension. You know, you had arrays that went from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, all the way up to length minus 1. Now we need to think of multidimensional arrays. Now, multidimensional multi arrays, two-dimensional arrays, just think of it like an array of arrays. So if we have this two-dimensional array, you can see we have an outer array. It starts, it wraps everything else. And then each one of the values in this array, instead of being a particular string or a particular number, it's just a another array. So we have an array of ABC, we have an array DEF, we have an array TUV, and we have an array XYZ, and they're all wrapped in one array. So this gives us a two-dimensional array where each row in this array is represented by an index and each column or each value within each one of the rows is represented by a particular index as well. So you can see if we're looking at row zero, column two, that's going to give us uh, C, which is the very first array here going up to the, the second position, zero, one, two. So it's going to give us C. And the or row one and column zero is going to give us D. And then row three, column one is going to give us Y. That's right there in the middle. So zero would be X, Y is one, and Z is two. So three, one would give us that, that uh, row three or the third array, zero, one, two, three. And then the f uh, value one, zero, one, two. That's going to give us Y. So once we have that, we can actually work with these different ranges. Ranges, when we receive a range from that get range val or get range call in our spreadsheet, uh, we have a couple of different things we can do with it. We can clear that range completely, so we can wipe everything out from a range. We can get the column where the range begins, and we can get the row where the range begins as well. We can also use get height and get width. There's also a, a method called get num rows, get num columns that works similarly, so that will tell us how many rows are in the range or how many columns are in the range. And then we can get the values. The get values is going to return this two-dimensional array of values. And that's going to be much more efficient than if we just use get range, get range for each individual cell that we might need when we're working with these calls. Uh, now, we want to avoid doing things one by one like that. We, you know, Earlier in this presentation, we looked at how we could get the range for a particular cell and we could get values very easily. But generally, that's not a great idea because it takes up a lot of time. Every time we, we call this spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range dot set value, we have to go into the spreadsheet and we have to set a particular value and then we have to come back, which takes some time for our application to keep up. Uh, it's much better to call just spreadsheet app dot get active sheet dot get range, get the range that you need and then set all of the values all at once. That way it only has to go into your spreadsheet one time. Uh, it only has to save your values one time. Uh, makes it much more efficient. So we'll get into some examples of how we do all of these different calls in our next couple of videos uh, and you'll see how you can actually work with this spreadsheet app to actually manipulate your spreadsheet and do some really interesting things. Thanks for watching.